What's going on Port fans? Welcome back to another video on the channel. Today we're going to be reviewing Showdown 54. Port Adelaide losing to the Adelaide Crows by 45 points in what was a very, very disappointing display um, in a showdown, a way showdown as well. So the Crows fans got to live it up and celebrate what was a, a pretty good victory for them. For us, Port Adelaide, um, it almost cost us a, a top two spot and it, it, it definitely was an opportunity going to waste considering we had an opportunity to go two games ahead with four games to go in um, in second position and a chance to even um, catch Collingwood back up to be within the game at top spot. But it didn't happen. It didn't eventuate. And now we're uh, sitting second still with a damage percentage and a very, very disappointing look towards the back end of the year. So... Let's get straight into it. Let's review Port Adelaide's loss to the Crows. It's so damaging to just sit here. We've lost both showdowns this year. It's so unsettling. Like it's all the belief that we had has been sucked away and just terminated in three weeks of football. How we can go from winning thirteen on the trot to losing to Carlton by 50 points, losing to the Crows by 45 points, losing to the Pies in probably one of the best games we've played um, at home by two points. The damage limitation that now has to be at hand, I guess maybe having that bit of an edge now where you know we're, we've lost three on the trot, the pressure is back on, the questions are starting to be asked again, might kick us into gear. But I'm sitting here. We're getting to that deadline of August. I'm sitting here. We've got players running into each other, knocking each other out, and not needing an assessment. We've got players playing out of form again. What is going on at Port Adelaide? What's happened in the last three weeks to suggest that all of a sudden now we look like a second-ranked side? Carlton have obviously come into great form, so that loss sort of looks a bit better than it is. We come up against a Collingwood outfit. It's the best clash of the year. It's top two. It lived up to everything and got the finish it probably deserved, but the wrong team winning. We now come into the showdown. I think we were flat. We were obviously dealing with sickness from quite a few players. Um, and we just looked lethargic. Never really got going. Uh, we had little patches where we dominated play, possession, just looked awful going inside 50. Um... Dixon was outmarked strongly by a, ga a five gamer. Um, Marshall was dominated the whole game. Didn't never really got a look in. Finlayson had patches, but again, just wasn't there. We were second to the footy. We were just non-existent in a showdown, which is very, very, very disappointing to turn up. Connor owes his 100th game. He played really well. Butters was really good. The usual suspects. You know, you go through the list of disposal getters and um, the impact that they had on the game. Rosie, Butters, Dersma was good, actually, I thought. Houston was very good. Um, Ollie Wines was serviceable, but again, had no impact, really. Um, had a lot of handballs, as he usually does. Dixon had 18 touches, uh, took quite a lot of marks up the ground, but inside 50 was non existent. Goal kicking was, again, average. I just, there's, I'm not sure how, I don't know where to fix it. Like, I just, I'm, it just, it's baffling to me that we sit here and I'm generally on edge thinking far out, we're going to go into finals, not winning many games at all. And it's just going to turn into dust and a waste of year. One that, at the end of the 13 game winning streak, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking, for once I actually believe, and this is my own fault, believing that there's an opportunity here that we're actually going to be a real premiership threat. And now I'm sitting here going, yeah, I know it's an upset round and a lot of the teams have been affected by, you know, the teams below really causing a few upsets. But this is, ever since the buy, there is a lot that's gone differently and a lot that just doesn't look like Port Adelaide. Um, and I'm very much questioning whether or not what's going to turn it around because whether it's just a little patch that we're having, like you look back at 2014, we had that patch in between where we 
we finished, we were top of the ladder and then all of a sudden we lost five of the next six. Uh, we finished fifth, got a home final, made it to a prelim. Is it like that? Is it like 2018 when we played the last seven games, lost six of them, didn't even make the eight? It's these patches that we have during the season that just cause us havoc. And I, I, Look, there was, I think 2020 we had one. 2021, we actually finished the year very strongly, win six on the trot and got a home final. There is certain elements of this that, yeah, okay, I'd rather this patch of form be down now and you know we get kick back into the year of the next four weeks, going into finals. I'm just not sure. And it's very disappointing that we've lost another showdown quite heavily as well. We've let Tex reign superior. We've let them all walk around with their shoulders out. Oh, here we are. You know, It's just really annoying. We don't deserve that, and that's the performance we put up. Now, the biggest talking point is obviously Aaliyah and Jones running into each other. Aaliyah, after six or seven minutes, I think, came back on the ground, was not required to have a head assessment, which is a bit bizarre. Um, the same with Lockie Jones. He was off, subbed, subbed out with a migraine. Um, I'm not exactly sure how to look at it, but it definitely does look a bit sus. I'm not one to question doctors or any um, anything like that. That is way above my pay grade. That is very much a decision that's been made by a, a veteran doctor that knows exactly what he's doing. Um, I think with this scenario here, obviously the, the, the look was awful. We've seen state like last year as well. We had Jonas and Butters run into each other. I think you know the, the past scenarios with Ebert. There is history there. Um, Hamish Hartlett as well was another one, I think. So it does come with a bit of uh, bait on the rod that this is going to surface up again. And obviously these past experiences are very difficult. They're each one are, are very different in their own way. Um, I do feel like at least an assessment should have been done on Aaliyah. Um, Jones with the migraine is quite funny because I think every Port fan had a migraine by the end of that one. So where's our substitute? Um... But yeah, I, I'm I'm not going to sit here. I'm not going to question anything because it's not... I mean, there is rules and regulations that need to be applied, but I have to be fully assessed and, and sort of looked into. But questioning a doctor is not something I'm gonna, not, I'm, that I'm going to do. That's as simple as that. I don't feel the need to do that because that's their profession. That's what they're paid to do. Um, I'm not paid. Uh, I'm voluntarily sitting here telling you exactly how I feel. So two different um, jobs, but yeah, I, I think that scenario, it just didn't look good, did it? Um, it's a, a bit of a roll of the dice scenario. I think Aaliyah should have stayed off a little bit longer. Probably should have been subbed out, to be honest, considering the performance he had on the text in the end. Um, but then again, it looked like all 22 players had their head knocked in. That's the way we were playing. So tough one to swallow, this one, Port fans. Um, and of, of course, there's a bit of controversy to come with it. So we'll just um, have to deal with that one and see what happens next. Well, that's it, poor fans. That's my review of the showdown. I'm not going to go much more into it. It's disappointing. Everyone let us down. It's time to bounce back next week against the Cats in Geelong, which is going to be a tough one considering I know they lost to Frio down there, but it always is the case down there. They're never going to be two in a row at their home ground. So it's going to be a very, very difficult prospect. It could be four on the trot that we'd lose. I know we probably were affected a little bit as well from the fact we just come off a massive game against the Pies and coming into another massive game like the showdown, it's very difficult to get yourself going like that, but we should be in a position where we need to. So hopefully this is the case this week and come back and bounce back against the Cats, but it'll be interesting to see what happens. So thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new for plenty more Port Adelaide and AFL content to come your way. The glass table will be out as well, so make sure you check that out coming this week. My name's Anthony, and as always, count the pay.